What I aim to do here is to help you to understand how to have a safe workplace during COVID-19. What I'm not going to give you is specific policies or guidelines for your own workplace because workplaces differ so much. But understanding is a very important thing to bring to any set of policies and procedures if they're going to work. So here are the basic principles that should inform any policy in a workplace. The first is distancing, the second is hygiene, the third is screening, the fourth is masks, and the final one is ventilation, by which I mean airflow, not the fancy machine they use in a hospital to help people breathe. So none of these measures is perfect on its own, but they work in combination. You can think of them as a cocktail of measures. So understanding is really important because if you know how the virus spreads and how to stop it spreading, you will implement your policies and procedures correctly. The virus is very tiny and you cannot see it, so you really need to understand all this. So first of all, let's look at how it can spread directly from one person to another. The person on the left is infected, the person on the right is not. And as you do anything that moves air out of your mouth, you send out little droplets that are far too small to see. As I illustrate them in the picture, they look like big blobs, but they're actually very tiny. Not as small as a virus, but you can't see them. So you send these little droplets out into the air whenever you send air out of your mouth with the, or even your nose from breathing out, coughing, sneezing, talking, singing, shouting, anything that moves air out of your mouth or nose. And so those droplets are the way the virus gets spread from one person to another. They can also spread through a surface. Here's our infected person again with their droplets. And the blue area is a surface near them. And as they're talking, breathing out, coughing or whatever, these droplets are spreading around and landing on that surface. Now they go away and sometime later, another person, this time as it happened, not infected, moves in and they touch that surface. Just touching with your hand is not such a bad thing because the virus can't get through unbroken skin. But what happens now is the uninfected person touches their face. And people do this all the time. You have an itch to scratch or, what, or whatever reason you touch your face and the virus can get in through your eyes, for example. So let's look now at the measures you can take to prevent the spread. First of all, distancing. You have our infected, uninfected person close together, and so those droplets are spraying in the other person's face, even though they can't see them. So what if you move further apart? Well, ideally at least two meters apart, and at that distance, a powerful cough might even still reach, but it's still a lot safer than being close together. So this reduces direct infection. It's not perfect but it does help. So what about hygiene? As I said before, the virus cannot get through unbroken skin, but you can spread it through touching your face, for example. So if you wash your hands often and clean surfaces often, you reduce the chance of that happening. And the good news is that plain, ordinary old soap and water work really well for cleaning the virus. If you use a surface cleaner, don't just spray it on and wipe it off. Give it a bit of time to do its job. This also is not 100% effective. You can't wash your hands all the time. You can't clean surfaces all the time. But it's part of the cocktail of measures and it all adds up. The screening is about checking regularly for people who have symptoms. The common ones that are well known are the ones that are like flu, like sore throat, headache, coughing, fever, and also feeling cold, not just feeling hot. But there are things like muscle aches, tiredness that can also point to the disease. And if you have been in contact with somebody who's known to be infected, in close enough contact to actually catch it from them, not the opposite side of the building, then this is something where you should be consulting the medical experts. And this again is not a perfect process because people are infectious before symptoms show. It can be two or more days before they even know they're sick. And there are even some who never show symptoms at all. But like all the other measures, it's not perfect on its own. They all add up. 
So on now to masks, again, our infected and uninfected person. What happens if the person who's not infected is wearing a mask and the other person isn't? So this is not going to catch everything. There are sophisticated medical grade masks that can catch everything, but those are not practical to use for the general public. So what happens if the person who is infected wears the mask? Well, this now does catch most of the droplets. Not perfect, but a lot better than the situation where the infected person is not wearing a mask. And so although that catches most of it, it's even better still that both the infected and uninfected person are wearing mask. So let's look at an example of how distance and hygiene work together. You take a lunch or tea break. You obviously are not going to wear the mask if you are eating or drinking. So make sure in your tea or lunch space you are spaced out. You're not sitting close together because people eating will also be talking, breathing out and so on. And you know you need a break, but the virus doesn't. It does not take a break. So when you take your food or tea break, don't sit close together in a small space. All right, so on to the last of the things in the cocktail ventilation. Air should move away from groups of people. And it's particularly bad if you have air conditioning or a fan that's blowing air across a room that goes from one group of people to another. You're just moving the virus from one place to the other if one of those people is infected. This can be a big problem in winter when people close things up to keep warm. This is one of the reasons that flu is much more common in winter than summer. People do get flu in summer, but because there's a lot of ventilation, the virus does not sit in one place. This again is not perfect on its own, which takes me back to the summary here is the cocktail. It's a mixture of measures. One of them on its own is not enough. If we do all of these things, the chances of infection spreading are much lower. In your particular workplace, you're going to have to have policies and procedures that are adapted to your situation, but the same basic principles apply. And understanding is a really important final ingredient in the cocktail, because if you understand how the virus spreads and how to prevent it, you won't incorrectly implement your workplace policies and procedures.